Welcome to section 3.3 on the number of solutions of a linear system. The goal of this section is to determine the number of solutions to a linear system by investigating the number of leading entries in the row echelon form or reduced row echelon form of the coefficient matrix and the augmented matrix of the linear system. What this means is that we'll be able to determine how many solutions a linear system has without actually solving the linear system. We begin with definition 3.3.1. We say that a linear system is consistent if the system has at least one solution. If the system has no solutions, we say that the system is inconsistent. If you've conjectured that a linear system can either have no solutions, a unique solution, or infinitely many solutions, you're right. Those are the only possibilities that a solution to a linear system can have. Let's record that as a theorem. Every linear system can either, has either a unique solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solutions. In the first two cases, we say that the system is consistent. In the other case, where the system has no solutions, that's when the system is inconsistent. To determine the number of solutions the linear system has, we rely on either the row echelon form or the reduced row echelon form. Of the augmented matrix of the linear system. We're able to do this because row equivalent augmented matrices represent linear systems that have the same solution set and so have the same number of solutions. We're not going to prove this theorem here, but we'll see the proof of theorem 3.3.1 in section 5.6. We also need to define the rank of a matrix. The rank of a matrix A is the number of leading entries in its row echelon or reduced row echelon form. We write rank of A. In example 3.3.1, we find we want to find the rank of each matrix. So the rank says that we just need to count the number of leading entries. So first I look at this matrix A and I say, is this matrix A in row echelon or reduced row echelon form? And we identify the leading entries as one and one. We can see that in fact, this matrix is in reduced row echelon form. And so to know the rank of the matrix, we just have to count the number of leading entries, which is two. So we get the rank of A is equal to two. Moving on to matrix B, Again, we're going to do the same thing. We look at the number of leading entries. We have a leading entry in the first row. We have a leading entry in the second row. And we have a leading entry in the third row. Their configuration is correct, but this time the matrix not, is not in reduced row echelon form because of the four. And also above the leading entry in row two and row four, we have numbers that aren't zero. But still, row echelon form is good enough for us. We can count the number of leading entries in the matrix B, and we get that the rank of B is equal to three. So there's something here to notice, which is that numbers that are leading entries can either be a coefficient to a linear system or can be one of the constants. And so you should pay attention to what happens in the two different cases as we move forward. We can also talk about ranks of matrices that don't have anything to do with augmented matrices. Let's look at matrix C. So when I look in the first row, I see a one. And I look in the second row, I also get a one. 
But then something funny happens in the third row. In the third row, I have the second one, which is not to the right of the one in the second row. So this matrix is not in row echelon form, which means I need to do a row, reduc a row reduction step in order to make it that. So I'm going to do the row operation, row three minus row two becomes the new row three, giving me the matrix one, two, three, zero, one, two, zero, zero, one. And so now, again, I can go back and I can count the number of leading entries. I have one, two, three. And so I can see that the rank of C is actually equal to three. It's a bit messy, so let me fix it. Okay, for matrix D, let's continue as before. We look at the leading entry in the first row second row, third row, I can see that this matrix is in row echelon form. It's not in reduced row echelon form because of the two, but that's okay. All that we have to do is count the number of leading entries. I get that the rank of D is equal to three.